Hi, uh, my name is Rick Fenninger. Um, I'm a media composer. And um, been a lot of talk lately about templates. Um, I use Cubase Logic. I also use Digital Performer. Um, I like Digital Performer for a variety of reasons. I grew up using it when it was just Performer. Um, I'm not telling you how old I am. Anyway, um, there's been a lot of uh, talk about templates and VE Pro and um, I found a solution that works for me and I thought I'd share it and I'll, I'll try to go slow and not forget anything. Um, I basically started out with, uh, like everybody else, I had nine slave PCs that I built um, and it, it worked fine. But the problem is again, getting them all started. If something crashed, you had to deal with whatever crashed, whatever, it was just a whole mess of uh, issues. Plus, it took up a lot of space, so here's a lovely picture of the back of, of this unit. Um, then I, I watched a video uh, by Junkie XL, and I totally loved it. I love Junkie XL, and he was using repurposed servers. And he, I think he had three of them or four of them, and his template was huge. And I said, well, I'll try, try that. So I did. And uh, learning curve was very steep, but I figured it out and uh, it was working great. Problem with that is the servers were old. Um, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on new ones because it was, you know, I might as well go back to my nine PCs, right? Um, so that worked. And here's a picture of this. And, you know, that worked great, but they kept breaking down and I, I had to find parts. And then all of a sudden I became this, you know, server guru or not and um you know i knew just enough about servers to be dangerous so i i kind of bailed from that um then i watched a, a video uh, from trevor morris so the moral of, of this story so far is i shouldn't watch any more youtube videos but trevor um had a great setup in cubase and i'll, I'll try to put a link find it and put a link below um but that sort of really piqued my interest and i did set up a template similar to trevor's in cubase and I thought, well, why can't I do this in Digital Performer? So I'm going to um, show you first my, my Vienna Ensemble Pro template and how I set that up. And um, then I'll, I'll show you how I get that to work in, in uh, Digital Performer. And this works for me. You may think I'm a total idiot and say, that's, you know, um, and if you have a better um, way to do this, boy, I'd love to know. But, um, you know, this works for me. And, I, and I, so I thought I'd share it. So uh, I'll show you my Vienna Ensemble Pro template first. So if you'll notice a um, couple things um, with, I do have Digital Performer loaded here already. And um, if I go up to my activity monitor and I have Digital Performer, my Digital Performer template loaded, which I'll get to in a minute, which has over 1100 tracks in it. And my um, Vienna Ensemble Pro template loaded in tandem with the digital performance all in one machine it's all on a mac pro um, and if you'll notice down here i'm basically using about 25 a little more than 25 gig of ram um, even when you start loading in uh, samples it bumps up a little bit but you know the reality is yeah i have 1100 tracks but when i'm composing i'm probably using 15 or 20 percent of my tracks all the time but i like to have them so i can get to them quickly um, instead of loading up an entire template this is so much easier um, on, on system resources. So how I set up my VE Pro template. So if you can see, uh, you know, going through this, I have a ton of channels. And um, the key that I found, aside from when I load in um, an instance of something to purge all the samples, after I've, after I've loaded in a channel with all the, all the um, sample libraries that I want in there, I will purge all the samples just because that takes out a lot of RAM um, out of the VE Pro build. So, and if you don't know how to do that, I guess I could show you how to do that. So, uh, what will I show you on? Well, I'll get to it when I, when I um, load something in. So, one thing I want you to notice is that um, these are all connected to DP via, via the plug here. And if you get up my digital performer template here, I have all my plugins um, down in one folder, okay? And what I do is it corresponds exactly to my, um, my Vienna Ensemble Pro template. So BBC, 
I have all the BBC instances loaded in for the BBC Spitfire Orchestra, and they're all right here. And when I save my template in Digital Performer, I I don't enable, um, I I guess unenable is that a word? Unenable, uh, you know the the plugins right here. So they're not connected to Vienna Ensemble Pro. So I launch Vienna Ensemble Pro first, then I launch DP, then I enable all the plugins that literally takes maybe seven to 10 seconds to uh, attach to uh, uh, Vienna Ensemble Pro. I will say that maybe one in 10 times for whatever reason, when I do it, uh, Digital Performer has a hard time connecting to Vienna Ensemble Pro. Um, but once I um, quit Digital Performer, reconnect, it does it. It connects. I don't know why. If somebody knows why, let me know. Um, but once I have a project saved the way I'm going to show you how I save it, it loads every time. I have no problems. So I don't know what the what the problem is. So talk going back to my Vienna Ensemble Pro. So if you notice it with this, they're all attached. It is attached to um, Digital Performer. And I've none of these channels are enabled. So that saves on a ton of loading time. So when I literally, um, when I launched Vienna Ensemble Pro with all these channels, all my plugins in it, over 1,100, um, it literally takes, I timed it this morning, it takes 56 seconds to load, okay? Then what I do, um, I will, let's say I'm in, um, I'm in Digital Performer and I decide I want to use a piano sound from Ascend. So I will go to Digital Performer. I will go to my keyboard folder. These are all my, my instrument tracks right here. And I will say, okay, I want to use a send. I'll click on the um, record button, obviously. And now since it's not enabled, well, I did enable it, but I'll, I'll unenable it. So now I'll go to it here. I'll enable it and it'll load. And it's a fairly large file. Took That took maybe five seconds. And the next thing I'll do, because um, I'm saving this for project specific, okay? So I don't overwrite my template. I will go to File, Save Server Project As. Um, I'm just going to call this Untitled. And I'm going to save it into my Untitled Project under uh, in where my Digital Performer uh, project is. It's untitled. I just did this for the sake of the video. So I'll save it. So now it'll be coupled with uh, my Digital Performer project. It'll be in the same folder. So when I go to launch it, I'll first I'll launch Vienna Ensemble Pro, obviously the untitled. Then I'll launch my document, my Digital Performer project, untitled, and it will automatically um, sync right up to it because I won't unenable the tracks. So um, I've now created the, the piano. I've, I've enabled it. And if I go into DP now, and I've already put it on the record, I can hear it. There's my piano track. Okay, so just kind of review again. So let's say I'm working and I want some string sounds. So I'll go back to, I'll go to my strings here. I'll go to the aperture strings for Spitfire. I'll click on it. I won't get anything because it's not enabled. So then I will go and find my string sounds. And there's aperture strings right there. And what I did was I lined these up identically to how I have them scrolled down in Digital Performer. So I just click on aperture strings. And this is a fairly large instance of aperture string. Took maybe three seconds. If I double click contact right here, boom, there it is. There they all are. So now if I play the violin, It's right there. If I want to get in and edit it or do key switches, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I can do that um, within that. And then I just save it every time. I just go. Oh, before I talking too fast again, right? Next thing I'll do is once I've instantiated it, um, I will go up to Control Click. I'll say Set Up Set Color. I'll choose Yellow just because it's easy to see, and this tells me that that instance is being used. So if I'm looking for something that I want to edit and I'm scrolling through, I can find the instances that I use pretty quickly. Okay, I didn't find, I didn't do the piano one, so just control, set color, yellow. So now I have these two instances loaded 
and um, I'm ready to go in um, DP. So um, that's how I set up my um, Vienna Ensemble Pro. Um, as a template, every track is unenabled. That way it loads up um, quickly. And the other thing I will do at the end of a, of a project, when I finish a project, I will save this also. I will basically unenable every track that I used and um, take the colors out. Well, I can guess I keep the colors in actually. I'll unenable them. Then I'll go file, save as, and I'll call it untitled D for disconnected. Because what happened to me um, uh, about six months ago was I, I loaded this up and it kept crashing, kept crashing. And I, I went to Native Instruments, you know, submitted the report and basically they said one of the plugins that I was using was causing it to crash. <laughs> I won't say which one. Um, comes from someplace in Hollywood. Anyway, I updated, it's fine. But this way, if I do have a plugin that crashes and is not up to date for whatever reason, I'll know specifically which one it is um, if I have to go back for a project in five years. Um, I hope that makes sense. So the way I have Digital Performer laid out is, again, I have all my instrument tracks in folders. Um, in a, in a work in a way that makes sense to me. And then I have all my plugins in folders that correspond exactly to my, um, so like if you go over to Woodwinds, I have my different Woodwinds. Um, BBC is all loaded up. You know, you can make your work environment however you want. Those are also uh, routed right to uh, my audio tracks. So I have hybrid synth audios and I have eight audio tracks for that. So then I can record them into audio on a fly for stems, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what else am I missing? I think that's pretty much it. But literally, like I said, this takes 60 seconds to load. There's over 1,100 tracks in my uh, template, um, my DP template. And like I said, obviously, I'm not going to be using, you know, all of these sounds all of the time so this is just a really quick way for me to navigate around and use it so um i hope this makes sense and if somebody has you know something different or a different way to do it um i'd love to know and i just thought i'd share mine with it this is very solid i've not i've had no issues and it's just great for me to have everything into a single machine so um i wish you the best and if this helps let me know and if i didn't cover something or, or covered something too fast, I'm happy to, to make another video for you. Um, leave it in the comments. This is kind of a broad overview, but I'm happy to show you how I set this up. So thanks.